Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The electricity crisis continues to bite and is also causing some policy confusion. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the state of play. Hi Terence. Hi Fino. Winter is coming and fears are rising over a grid collapse. Yes, I think so. I mean, South Africans have had this very intense period of load shedding this whole year. I think there's been more hours of load shedding already this year than the whole of last year. I mean, how bad 2022 was uh, for South Africans. So we've had just about every day, we've had not only load shedding, but at very high levels. And we're at stage six currently, and uh, there's no sign of when that's going to, that pressure's going to alleviate. So there's growing anxiety as we enter the high demand winter months. Are we going to have a total grid collapse? I think the answer to that is that the probability of a total grid collapse is low. We know that the system operator has been managing a very tight system for many years. We've had 17 years now of load shedding. So they continually, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, are trying to keep, keep that balance uh, in the electricity system and they have done it so far. The possibility though of stage eight type or even higher load shedding this winter is high, uh, given that we have uh, continual breakdowns across this coal fleet and for the first time we enter winter without both units of Kuburg operating and that's, uh, that's a big difference. And we also obviously know that we don't have the, the new plant, the Kusile plant, 2,100 megawatts, it's not available. So very high levels of breakdown, plus the structural, two structural elements, the Kuburg and the Kusile, that are just not going to be there to provide any relief. So there's, it's going to feel, if we get to stage eight, it's going to feel like total blackout. For, might not be technically total blackout, but it's going to feel it because most of the hours of the day, we're not going to have electricity from the grid uh, as citizens. So. We have to, I suppose, people have to prepare for almost a blackout type scenario because it's that intense, it's that many hours of the day that we're not going to be having electricity. What actions are being taken and will it be of any help this winter? There's so many interventions and so many actions and so many words, uh, but in terms of this coming couple of months, so June, July, which is the, the cold period in South Africa, when demand really rises, and we especially over peak times, uh, there's very few levers. We know that um, Eskom's got 30 billion rands worth of budget to burn diesel, which is a lot more than they've had over the last few years. That's an official amount. Usually they just go beyond the sort of 8 billion level that they get from the regulator. But through the tariff and through the bailout, uh, or the debt relief package, there's now 30 billion rands. So I think we'll see that the average use of the open cycle gas turbines during winter is going to rise significantly. And I think they said the average use has been around 11% and it's going to be closer to the 20% level. So that hopefully will give a little bit of relief, but it's not nearly enough uh, in terms of what, what we need to close the gap as this gap widens as we enter the high demand period. The other lever is obviously load shedding and there's very major fears that we're going to go beyond stage six and we know how debilitating stage six is. We've been living through it this week. So there's fears that we're going to go to these even higher levels of load shedding. That's the other lever. Other than that, there are very, very few levers. I mean, on the demand side, you can talk about ripple controls and all these other things. Those are going to take very many <laughs> months to not only just to go through the procurement process, never mind install. So I don't think those are going to come to our aid at all. The only possible immediate lever they could look at is to actually go to the energy intensive businesses, the smelters and say, can we buy back your power for this period? Maybe for some hours, or maybe for some, for, uh, for some weeks. Um, it will be extremely expensive to do because you'll basically ask them to not operate over this winter period. But it is one of the the levers and a, I think a cost-benefit analysis. It hasn't been discussed publicly from what I can see, but it surely is something that they will have to look at actually to ask businesses to go into shutdown during this period. They all have their annual shutdowns and those that can maybe go into it. But there's been no formal communication around that, but that is a possible lever. But uh, 
you know, there's going to be communications and TV and radio messages to switch off, but it's, it's quite difficult. You know, if you've been in load shedding for most of the hours of the day, and now you've got some power, you're going to want to use it as a citizen and as a business. So I don't think there's going to be massive response to switch off your geezer and your poop pump and that because you haven't had electricity the whole day. So now when you've got it, you're going to want to use it. So I think there are going to be those sort of campaigns. But again, we haven't seen the Eskom winter plan and that's crucial. We need to know as citizens, we have to have some visibility of what that is and where as citizens and businesses we can help. But I think there's very, very few levers and really the only one is if they can keep the coal fleet breakdowns below 15,000 megawatts and they're nowhere near that at the moment. They're closer to the 20,000 megawatts level than the 15,000 sort of base case that they, they want. And I mean, to really keep the lights on, we have to be well below the 15,000, I think between 10 and 13 to not have load shedding. So it looks like it could be a very, very difficult period. There's still uncertainty about the role of the electricity minister and South Africa's approach to the energy transition. Yeah, this uncertainty has increased, you know, since the appointment of the electricity minister. Uh, and it's really increased around this issue about, you know, the decommissioning schedule. I think there is sympathy for South Africa in the sense that, you know, to close down units that are op operational uh, during load shedding, I think they are, there's sympathy from even our partners that are funding the just energy transition, that that could be untenable. But they, I think that's the mixed messages. It's the uncertainty around the, the messaging and different ministers saying quite distinctly different things that I think is causing a lot of uncertainty at the moment. But we should have some visibility of the updated generation plan soon. Yes, I think with some trepidation we wait with that because that's uh, en Electric Energy Minister Greta Mantash has said he's going to be releasing this soon. They've done a lot of work on it. But we know that his views uh, also contradict both the energy transition, the just energy transition investment plan that we've published and that we're getting backing for, um, as well as even other, some of the other ministers. There's a there's real contradiction there. So we'll, I think it's better that it comes out. We need to see, have visibility of what the, the, the RRP 2023, as he's calling it, contains. There's going to be a lot of people looking very intensely at that plan because if it basically does away with decommissioning schedules, because the current plan 2019 has a clear decommissioning schedule for, for the coal fleet, which is in line with dead stop dates in terms of how long these plants were supposed to operate and their licenses to operate are there for. If it has a whole load of new nuclear in there, there's going to be a lot of eyebrows raised, particularly given the cost of nuclear and the very bad performance out of Kuburg over the last couple of years in terms of getting this long-term operating license, which, which is also underway at the moment. So that's going to, and then the, co yeah, the cost of nuclear is, you know, doesn't make sense in a country where the affordability of electricity has become a major crisis, you know, where the cheapest electrons are going to come from a combination of solar, wind, and whatever you use to back that up, not from nuclear. That's going to be interesting to see. And if the, the renewables component is shrunk, when you can see that the easiest way to fund new power and is appetite from investors is around the renewables and storage type environment. So I think there's a lot of trepidation, as I say, about what's going to be in that plan, but it's better that it's out and let public just debate it and let's have a tech, proper techno-economic discussion around this and try and take, and it's impossible, but to try and take out the non-technical political rhetoric as much as possible, which I fear is going to sort of dominate the new plan. Thank you. That's the second tag show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.